We start our tour of the Anacostia at the end of its flowing waters, at the southern extent of the river as it flows into the Potomac River. The Anacostia River is one of the larger tributaries to the Potomac River, with the confluence, or the meeting point, of the two rivers occurring at Haines Point in Washington, D.C. This meeting of the two rivers illustrates just how important Anacostia River health is to the health of the Potomac, because everything that flows down the Anacostia will inevitably flow into the Potomac River and then down into the Chesapeake Bay. Haines Point and East Potomac Park play a special role in the Anacostia and DC history as it's actually a man-made island that was built in tandem with the Tidal Basin in the late 1800s. It is named after Peter Conover Haines, who helped to design the Tidal Basin as increasing floods, tidal flats, and rank smells from the wetlands were considered unsightly and dangerous to waterfront areas of DC. The channel that flows into the Anacostia just upstream of the confluence with the Potomac is called Washington Channel and flows from the Tidal Basin, past the wharf and East Potomac Park, and eventually into the Anacostia at Haines Point next to Fort McNair, which is located on Greenleaf Point. What's interesting about the Tidal Basin is that it was built to help drain the tidal flats along the Potomac and Anacostia. Now, water flows into the Tidal Basin from the Potomac and flows out into Washington Channel and the Anacostia as the tide drops. This mechanism helps the water in the Tidal Basin to move in and out, helping to filter it some, which is why we typically see some of the best water quality in DC along the Tidal Basin and Washington Channel. This area of Southwest has always been shaped by the rivers that flow along its banks. In 1805, at the wharf, the municipal fish market opened and is one of the longest operating fish markets in the United States. This area served as a home to many recently freed slaves moving into the district during and after the Civil War, as DC had work opportunities and was seen as a hub for abolitionists and civil rights leaders like Frederick Douglass and Mary Church Tyrell. In 1848, the wharf was even the site of one of the largest and most daring escapes by slaves in the United States, with 77 slaves attempting to flee Washington and escape to freedom on board the ship the Pearl. The whole plan was even hatched by a former slave of President James Madison, Paul Jennings. Unfortunately, in the mid-1900s, misguided efforts towards redevelopment and urban renewal in the district forced many Southwest residents out of longstanding communities. Currently, the wharf has been redeveloped into DC's newest waterfront community with the intention of eventually meeting with the Navy Yard further north to create an inclusive and connected Anacostia waterfront community. As we move further up the river towards the Frederick Douglass Bridge, we will pass Fort McNair on the west bank of the river and Joint Base Anacostia Bowling on the east bank of the river. The location where Joint Base Bowling now sits is believed to be one of the old locations for a large tribal village of the Nakachtank people, one of the first indigenous inhabitants of DC who made their home along the Anacostia. English colonizers to the area called the Nakachtank people the Anacostans, from which the Anacostia gets its current name. On the west bank of the river is Buzzard Point, home to DC United's new Audi Field and future riverfront development. It also serves as the location for James Creek Marina, one of the few marinas on the Anacostia named after the old James Creek, a stream that used to flow through DC and enter the Anacostia nearby the current marina. Also located here is one of DC's Bandalong litter traps that was installed and is managed by us at Anacostia Riverkeeper. This floating device is installed at the mouth of the stormwater outflow, which allows it to capture and hold trash in place preventing it from reaching the main stem of the actual Anacostia. This device is just one of a number of different ways that DC is preventing trash and debris from entering into its surface waters. Looking into the future, this southern portion of the Anacostia is going to serve as a centerpiece for climate resilience efforts on the river. 
This area has some of the lowest elevations in the watershed, and over time has experienced dramatic floods, and is even starting to experience sunny day flooding, or flooding due to extreme high tides. To combat this, DC has built a comprehensive climate plan that created more flood-aware building requirements and is researching new nature-based solutions to mitigate some of the effects of increased flooding and rising waters. Solutions like living shorelines and other green infrastructure projects that work naturally with the natural environment to help reduce flooding in the area.